This is Sessions for the Soul. My name is Amy, and thank you for being here with me today. Let's talk about conscious consumption today and how what we consume on a regular basis can either negatively or positively influence our lives. A few months back, for example, I went on Instagram, TikTok, and I started unfollowing a lot of people, a lot of creators, a lot of pages, that I felt were leaving a negative impact, lowering my vibration, or I just didn't feel aligned with. This was pages that promoted a lot of violence, a lot of gossip, drama, and influencers that weren't influencing me in the ways I wanted to be influenced. What they stood for wasn't in alignment with who I am as a person and, and what I want to become and what I want to be influenced by. And then I start following people that actually inspired me, that actually were living a life that I wanted to live or they were giving off an energy that I also wanted to embody or I found similarities between them and myself, the potential that I could become and things that motivated me to be that version of myself, to bring it out of me. A lot of the pages I follow are also very educational. I'm learning something from it, whether it be psychological things, health-related things, cooking, um, spirituality, other mothers that have young kids and I can relate to on that level, and starting with social media is a big thing because it plays such a big role on our reality, probably more than we give credit to. The things we see on social media, the things we see on the news, um, the gossip, the drama. I was actually watching a video on this on an account that I now follow that teaches me about these things, but listening to constant drama and gossip actually activates your amygdala in your brain, the part of your brain that deals with fear. Social media does play a big part, a big role of how we view reality, of what we're seeing on a daily basis, what we're hearing, what's getting instilled in our minds and our subconscious, and the effects that it has over time. But other things that we consume that we need to be consciously aware of, for example, is if we have any addictions, are we stuck in poor lifestyle choices or habits, whether that be ingesting, participating in, viewing, all of these things are what we consume. When I was younger, I used to drink a lot. I used to like to party. I used to like to be around people that weren't the best company to keep around or just were in a low vibrational state in influencing me in a way that I shouldn't have let them influence me. And I used alcohol, I used partying, I also smoked weed for a moment in my life. The people that I was around when I was doing these things I no longer talk to, I no longer hang out with, because that's also a part of being aware and being mindful of the company I keep and the energy that they bring to me and that I was in when I was with them. And I became aware that these things were keeping me in a low state and were making me more anxious. Um, were making me more depressed, and once I realized that, I cut it out completely. I stopped drinking drastically, I stopped smoking weed. I never really did anything else, but those were the things that I personally used as an escape. And hanging out with people that weren't the best influence on me, that were doing things that I didn't agree with, that were against my morals, that made me feel bad, that made me feel anxious, and these were all personal choices I made at the time because I was in a low vibrational state. And all the people I surrounded myself were also in a low vibrational state. We were in alignment back then. Then you have to think to yourself, what is it that's draining my energy? What is it that I no longer want to indulge in or partake in, 
to be my best self, right? To be my best version. What is something that's not in alignment that I don't want to consume? And then I slowly grew away from these people and I wanted to better myself. And, you know, I had my awakening years after that. But slowly up until then, I just started realizing things that didn't serve me anymore and that I didn't want to be and I didn't resonate with. I completely stopped smoking weed and I drink very rarely on occasion, but I have become aware of the effects that these things can have on you, especially when you're addicted to them. I never struggled with addiction like that, but I know how easy it is to fall into that for a lot of people. You don't want a vice to have that control over you. It can affect you in so many ways. It can affect the ones around you, your loved ones. But, you know, that's something besides the point. What I'm saying is I became aware of the things that made my body not feel right. And that's what you have to go based off of your internal compass, honoring your own personal energy and treating your body like something that is sacred, something that you want to protect. Like the saying, my body is a temple. What you put into it is what you get out of it. The more you pay attention to how your body feels and how it reacts to things, the more you will kind of hack your body, hack your mind and be able to get the outcome of life, the quality of life that you want to live and feel the best within yourself, body, mind, and spirit. The key is awareness, right? It's being mindful. And when your body tells you, uh, I don't feel right about this, or you eat something and your body feels like, mm, this isn't sitting right with me, your body's rejecting it, right? Pay attention to what your body rejects. And if something is impacting your mind in a negative way, and that's gonna be your intrusive thoughts. When you watch something and it makes you doubt yourself, it makes you question, it instills fear inside of you. And a lot of this can be from the friend groups that you hang out with, from social media, right? The news, family members even. Hearing things and consuming things that put you at a, in a state of fear, self-doubt, judgment, jealousy even. Why are these things making me feel this way? What is it that's making me feel this way? And what are you going to do about it, you know? How can you stop it and take back control of your life? Another huge thing that we consume that has an impact on us is literally what we eat. Everything we consume either gives us energy or takes away energy. And when we eat food, depending on what we eat, can either increase our energy and make us feel good and, and high vibrational, or it can bring us down in vibration and make us feel sluggish and make us feel drained or overstimulated. The meat that we eat, carries energy. That's why you see a lot of options for when you're buying eggs. You have free range, pasture raised, um, cage free. And that's all because the different living environments for the chickens, when they lay the eggs, all changes the quality of the product. It's a byproduct of their environment, right? And what they consume is what we consume. If animals are being tortured, we're consuming that energy, that, that fear, that trauma is in the meat and it stays and we ingest that to our bodies. It's a big reason why a lot of people turn vegan. I myself have considered becoming vegan because of it, because there's so many, you know, things that aren't good about the meat that we eat. And it's very hard to get past, but just at least being aware of that, right? And are we eating a lot of super processed foods that have a lot of additives, a lot of dyes, a lot of chemicals, preservatives, or are we eating a lot of natural, organic, GMO-free, paying attention to labels on food that we buy and knowing how to read the ingredients and understand what certain ingredients mean for us when we ingest them.
like high fructose corn syrup, red 40, natural flavors, <laughs> calcium chloride, fluoride in our water, how all of this has an impact on our health in general, and trying to make substitutes like instead of having that large coffee with a bunch of sugars and syrups, having a cup of green tea or, you know, any type of tea, um, saffron, chamomile, like for all these different benefits that you know when you're consuming it, you're, it's helping you in some way because herbs are medicine and coffee and sugars make your body crash. They overstimulate you. It spikes your cortisol levels. That has another effect on a bunch of different things in your body and weight gain and anxiety and stress and all of that. Shopping at places like Whole Foods and Sprouts and Trader Joe's rather than Walmart and Albertsons and you know all these other places which I still shop at Albertsons, I still shop at Vons, but kind of knowing how to navigate and pick the best options that they have there is another thing that I've been doing to improve my life. And I also want to add that it's very hard to do that in America. We have different health regulations. The FDA is, I feel, trying to poison us, um, Big Pharma, but <laughs> that's besides the point. There's always things that we can do, it, and better yet, growing your own food right your own fruits and vegetables having a farm like it's not really likely out here where i live but for some people that's an option and if that is an option it's your best bet especially in america and when you make that shift you will see so many positive outcomes to it in your mental health, in your physical well-being, losing stubborn fat, the stress in your body. You will feel an overall improvement by doing these things. Another thing that I cut back on, similar to social media, is what I watch on TV. I used to watch a lot of horror films. Horror was my favorite genre. Um, I loved a good horror movie. I like to be scared. But over time of watching these movies, a lot of times, if they were good and they actually scared me, a lot of times they would leave me feeling eerie, uncomfortable, like I was being watched. I would have nightmares, sleep paralysis even. TVs, just like mirrors, just like your phone, is all portals. So when you watch something on TV, on your phone, you're opening up that, that portal for all these energies to come through. So when you're watching TV, when you're on your phone, when you're listening to music especially, um, you're opening up a portal allowing these energies to come through and influence you and linger into now your space. And also you hear the actors speak about what happened when they were filming. Sometimes weird, strange things would be happening um, and they would be tapping into that energy where some of them are based on true stories. So all of it's very unsettling, very dark. And I chose to not watch these films anymore. And if I do, I know how to properly protect myself. And I close off the portals and I cleanse myself and I cleanse my room and I say a prayer. Um, you know, all these things to properly protect myself because I'm consciously aware of the energy that I am potentially inviting in. Or if you ever notice, I don't know, if you watch reality TV or shows that have a lot of explicit language, a lot of drama, um, mad behavior, sometimes it can kind of rub off on you or you may start speaking more vulgar or 
catching an attitude quicker like one of the characters especially if you're someone that gets into a show or a movie like me like I start to feel the characters I'm the type of person that if a character is crying over something I'll probably be crying over their drama <laughs> too really build a relationship with the characters when you're watching something if it's a good movie and they're a good actor that's the whole point you know and you want to be aware like the character that they're embodying do i want to pick up on that energy you know or is that something that isn't what i how i want to be perceived how i want to start acting like just like your social circles your friends that you keep around sometimes you start to act like them you are who you hang out with i don't necessarily think that's true the whole way but definitely you pick up on their behaviors and their way of talking and their humor. So I know we spoke about food and if what we're eating is giving us the right nutrients or is it causing cancer in my body, causing dis-ease in my body that I'm going to have to fix later on go to the hospital, go to the doctors, pharmaceuticals, and then they're going to try to sell me medication, medicine, antibiotics, to try to put a band-aid over the problem and temporarily make me feel better, that in the long run is actually going to be even worse for my health. So medicine. I don't really take medicine like that either. I like a lot of holistic herbal remedy type of things, energy healing, going out in nature, getting sunlight, the right vitamins and nutrients that my body is lacking or that I'm deficient in that can be causing my body to feel off or get sick, build up my immunity. Because once you start taking medication after medication, it ends up being like a domino effect. You, one after the other, you're, you're gonna need more and more and more. And it's all gonna lead to the same outcome of not really fixing the root problem. It's gonna all come back full circle. And unfortunately, that's what they push, at least in America. It's very expensive and it's very bad for our health in general. Same thing goes for what we put on our body. So not just what we ingest, but what we put on our skin, right? Our skin is an organ and it absorbs everything. So this is the lotion, the shampoo, conditioner, body wash, exfoliator, the makeup, um, all of this is getting consumed, it is getting absorbed into our skin, into our scalp, and a lot of these products have hormone disruptors. They can give us rashes or skin problems, irritation, skin cancer. A lot of it is just toxic chemicals and fragrances, and we buy into it because it smells so good, or it makes our skin look really shiny and sparkly. And that's what we want when we're trying to buy body products. We want something that's gonna make us smell good and look good. We don't really consider what it's actually doing to our bodies. Deodorant is a huge one. A lot of deodorant has heavy metals in it and hormone disruptors and cancer-causing chemicals. And I've seen a lot more natural deodorants on the market. And I've tried, I think, at least four brands. And it's hard to make the switch because a lot of times they don't work as well. Um, they don't mask the odor as well as the other ones. Maybe they don't smell as nice, you know. And I actually went through this recently with a deodorant brand because I've been using natural deodorants for the past five years. I recently tried to use a deodorant that was less natural, that smelled really good, and I trusted it because I like the brand, and the brand was native, and I've used their, their body wash. They're better than a lot of big name body washes. So I tried their deodorant, and it was a Girl Scouts line, so it smelled like Girl Scouts cookies, <laughs> um, which honestly I like to smell like caramel and sweet, vanilla, so like I thought I would try it, because I thought it was still healthier and like more holistic than the other brands. And 
it was like my body was not used to it or something or it was rejecting it because I used it for I think two months and in those two months I sweat more than I have in my entire life. I'm not someone that sweats a lot. I sweat a little bit, especially if it's hot outside, but never have I ever had pools of sweat <laughs> like I did when I switched to this deodorant. And not only that, like it smelled really good, but then after the sweating and after wearing it all day, it literally would probably last six hours max. And then I would need to apply more. Also, when I would shave and I would put it on, it burned. And I should have took that as a sign, but I thought maybe like, you know, my, fr my skin is just freshly cut. Anything I put on is probably gonna feel the same. And it just, my body was reacting to it. Like it was trying to get it off of me. The sweat was like it was trying to like purge it out. And once I found that out, I actually just switched to whatever else I had at the moment that was given to me. And it wasn't even a natural deodorant, but it was a travel size Dove spray. And I've never tried like spray deodorants before, but when I started using this, I like completely stopped sweating. It was like a drastic change. I was only using this one temporarily until I went and bought a new natural deodorant. But I've actually found that using that specific one, um, I sweat way less and it lasts like 24 hours or more. But it was really eye-opening that when we make the shift and we start living more healthy and making conscious choices of what products that we use, when we revert back to those other products, your body will know and it will reject it. But then that also makes it easier to live that healthier lifestyle because you've grown accustomed to it and that's now what your body is looking for. But yeah, like makeups especially, if you do a full face of makeup every day, what are you putting on your skin? Like, really think about that. Look at the ingredients, look up what they mean because, or what they can do to your body. Because over time, that's when things have an impact. A lot of times people don't make lifestyle changes because they're not seeing the impact in the moment. Like, these things, these additives, these ingredients in the food, in the body wash, and the lotion, and everything, it doesn't affect us till later on in life. That's how the FDA gets away with putting all these toxic chemicals in our foods and our products, because if everyone just had an instant reaction when we ingested something or when we put something on our body, there would be lawsuits, there would be people immediately going to the hospital, they would be cutting these things out of their diet. It's something that ends up shortening our lifespan or gives us health problems at the end of our life or in the middle of our life, not right away. It's a delayed effect and that's how they get us. They're slowly poisoning us. As the weeks go by, years go by, we're, con we're constantly using these things to have a negative impact we will see the result of it in time. So even if it means it's a little bit more expensive, buying supplements can be really expensive, making a shift and using non-toxic makeup, non-toxic beauty products and skin care and body wash can be expensive, but not nearly as expensive as it is to pay that hospital bill in 20 years time because now you have an illness, now you have disease in your body and you need medical attention. <laughs> or you wake up every day and you don't feel right in your body and it, it becomes harder to resolve the problems later on in life and especially when it's been um, accumulating over time, it's much easier to just cut it out right in the moment and make the lifestyle shifts as you go. And while these things may be expensive, 
the best thing you can do is invest in your health. So if buying things for the betterment of your health is your biggest expense, it's well worth it. So going along with the products that we put on our body, also consider the clothes that you wear right and this is the fabric it's made out of is it cotton is it polyester is it real animal fur how where does it come from how was it manufactured and a lot of mass production shops like Shein use low quality fabrics a bunch of dyes harmful chemicals in the production of their clothes and you're putting that on your body, just like the detergent you use, right? It can give you skin irritation. You're putting that those chemicals on your body at a regular basis. You wash all your clothes with it. Not only that, but in a spiritual sense, what energy is attached to the clothes you wear, to the jewelry that you wear? After a few years, I rotate my clothes. I get rid of clothes because even if they still fit me, if you were wearing certain clothes when you were at a point in your life that you grew from, that, you're, that you no longer resonate with, that you're not aligned with, that has negative energy, low vibrations, really consider getting rid of it or at least cleansing it, cleansing your clothes regularly. I use sage and palo santo with the intention of cleansing the energy and making the clothes new. When you put clothes on, you're embodying something, right? You have an image, you're, you feel a certain way, right? And after a while, you have to think, does this piece of clothing portray an image or a message that resonates with me? Every time I thrift clothes, I make sure to number one, wash them and number two cleanse them because you don't know what kind of household it's coming from you don't know what kind of energy it's carrying you don't know who owned it previously so that's really important as well and I don't think I've never really heard anyone talk about that but cleansing is just as important as cleaning so when you put all these things together and you start making lifestyle changes and you really start to be mindful of what you consume how it's affecting your mind your body your spirit that's when you can really start to improve your life you can really start living the life you want to live and embodying the version of yourself that you want to embody and i promise if you do all of these things you will be a completely different person at the end of it and if i can just compare the person i was when i was consuming all these more toxic low vibrational things to the version of myself that i am now it's day and night it's a complete shift for the better and i feel a lot better so if you gained anything from this session i hope it's becoming more aware of the things that no longer serve us the things that have a low vibrational impact versus a high vibrational impact so thank you guys for being here with me today and as always namaste